hi guys welcome back to fairies tutorials in today's episode we'll be looking at part two of proteins in the diet food nutrition and health section two nutrition and health and in today's episode we're looking at content four part two of proteins in the diet now let us take a look at our focus points now in today's session we'll be looking at the functions of protein food sources of protein and also the health conditions associated with improper intake of protein now let's jump in with the functions of proteins so number one protein helps repair and build your body's tissues it allows metabolic reaction to take place and coordinates bodily functions it provides the body with a structural framework proteins also maintain proper ph and fluid balance it's a secondary source of energy and it also helps in the creation of hormones and antibodies. Now, let us look at some additional functions of protein. It aids in digestive enzymes and it helps to facilitate chemical reaction. It supports muscle contraction and movement. It provides support to the body. It helps our antibodies to support immune function. It supports and regulates and express DNA and RNA. It moves essential molecules around the body. And finally, it is in the production of hormone, which helps to coordinate bodily functions. Now that's a whole mouthful of proteins, right? as it relates to the function so oftentimes when we hear about proteins yes we think about it builds and repairs body tissues it helps to build muscles and also it's a secondary source of energy but this tutorial provide you with a wide variety of the functions of proteins and you can stick to the ones that you're comfortable with right so let us move on to our next phase now we're looking at protein sparing what does this actually mean now protein sparing is the process by which the bodily the body derives energy from sources other than protein such sources can include dietary fats and carbohydrates now the primary function of proteins is to what build and repair our body tissues but it also have a function where it's a secondary source of energy. So when we speak of protein being spared, we're thinking of protein, uh, the body is deriving other energy from other sources that is eaten within the meal. And those sources are, new, are normally from fats and carbohydrates. All right. Now let us move a little further to look at the food sources of proteins good and there are two categories we're looking at animal sources and plant sources and based on these image i know you should be able to make a list for yourself so on the plant sources we have what the legumes groups so we have peas beans nuts and we have different types of nuts there and different types of peas and beans and you can make a comprehensive list based on these images that are being displayed on the animal source you notice we have dairy products we have eggs we have fish different types of meat right now let's look at the health effects of improper intake of proteins so when we're speaking of improper intake, we're looking at the health benefits if we consume too much proteins or too little proteins. Let us look at what they are, all right? So a lack of protein in the diet will lead to nutritional disorders such as children may not grow and develop as they should. And in severe cases, 
they get the conditions Kwashiorkor or Marasmus or a combination of both. So we have what is quash marasmic Kwashiorkor and that's a condition of both Marasmus and Kwashiorkor. All right. And that is a different deficiency. And what you're seeing here being displayed of a child which has squashy yogurt and another child which has a uh, marasmus. Now let us look at the signs and the symptoms. Now a child with squashy yogurt may have swelling of the legs, right? And this condition is called oedemia, right? They have uh, a moon face with little interest of surroundings. So it's like they're there, but they're not. Just how a, ch a child would be uh, exploring and noticing what is happening around them. These uh, children who may have kwashiorkor have a little interest in their surroundings, right? Uh, their skin has a flaky appearance. Their abdomen is swollen and also they have thin muscles may be present. Now, on the other hand, a child with marasmus have, they have normal hair growth. They have an old man or, or a, a weasened appearance. They have thin limbs with muscles or fat, and they are very underweight, right? So those are the signs and the symptoms of a child who may be suffering from kwashiorkor or marasmus. And remember, these conditions may occur in children that have protein deficiencies. All right. Now, let us look at another impact. So we're looking at, uh, so pregnant women may also have miscarriages, premature births, or anemia. And those are the deficiencies. Now, let us look at if we consume too much protein. Now, consuming too much protein can lead to excessive weight gain, all right? And those are the effects of improper intake of proteins on health. Now, let's take a look at the daily intake of macronutrients. And the macronutrients are carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. Now, a healthy diet consists of the right combination of the three macronutrients. Fats provides nine calories per gram. Carbohydrates and proteins each contain four calories per gram, right? And what you're seeing here are the percentage daily intake of the macronutrients. So first up, we have carbohydrates with 45% to 65%. Fats with 20 to 35% and proteins with 10% to 35%. All right. And now we're at the checkpoint. <laughs> effects of a lack of protein have on young children. Let's go again. Give two effects that a lack of protein will have on young children. Two a lack of protein in the diet of a pregnant woman can cause. And finally, how does excessive intake of protein contribute to excessive weight gain? Awesome. You've made it to the end of the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and also share with persons who you know will find this information useful. Thank you for making it Ferris Tutorials.